Hey guys, so in today's video I'll be showing you how to true into your Arch Linux installation to fix and install packages. And so let's just assume you just finished installing your favorite desktop environment on Arch, but oops you forgot to install a terminal, and you have no way to install a terminal because you don't have a terminal. It's kind of a catch-22. So as you can see I don't have any kind of terminal here. So what do I do? Or alternatively, maybe you updated a problematic package and now it won't boot in. So I'm going to show you how to true into your Arch Linux installation through a live USB to solve these problems. So let's get into it. So first off for this, you're going to need an Arch Linux live USB. And I assume you already have one from when you installed Arch Linux onto your computer and you know how to flash a live USB. But if not, just go to the official Arch Linux website and download the ISO and flash it. I personally like to use Belina Etcher because it's simple. But if you're on Windows, for example, you can alternatively use Rufus. And so before I power off this machine, I'm just going to show you a text file I have here in downloads. It says Arch hard drive, and it essentially serves as a proof that um, the text file is located on my hard drive installation of Arch Linux. So I'm going to be accessing that later when I root into the system. And so with that in mind, I'm going to power off my machine. All right, and as you can see, I'm using Vert Manager here with QEMU. That's where Arch Linux is installed. But if you're on a physical system, this is going to be uh, exactly the same. You just want to go into your BIOS and access your boot menu and plug in your uh, live USB and move that up in the boot priority. So that's going to be my SATA CD-ROM here. And as you can see, that is the ISO image for Arch Linux. So that essentially serves as the live USB. So now I'm going to boot this image here because it's the first one in the boot priority. So if I power on my machine again, as you can see, here is the Arch Linux install medium. So there we go. I'm booting off of my live USB now. So I'm going to select just the typical install and I'm going to wait for everything to set up. All right, I'm in. And so now the first command we want to do when we're here is fdisk l and so this essentially lists all the disks that we have uh, attached to the system so as you can see we have uh, disk dev slash vda and also dev slash loop zero now loop zero is your actual live usb so we don't need to worry about that we're going to be more focused on slash dev slash vda so as you can see slash dev slash vda actually has two partitions vda1 which is an EFI file system, which is your boot partition, and VDA2, which is your actual system partition. And so we're going to be using the mount command to mount both of these partitions, and we're going to mount it to slash MNT. Alright, and we're going to mount VDA1 as well to slash MNT slash boot slash EFI because it's your boot partition and so by the way if the previous command doesn't work try typing EFI in lowercase characters it just depends on if you use uppercase or lowercase uh, when you first install the system so if you don't remember just try both and one of them should work all right so once both of these partitions are mounted you can use the arch dash uh, root command and root into slash mnt and there we go, you're in. So once you're in here, we actually have access to the actual Arch Linux installation on the hard drive. So this is the NeoFetch of the actual installation. And to prove it to you, I'm going to access that text file that I talked about earlier. So I'm going to CD, I'm going to change directory into my downloads folder where the folder is located. And there's the downloads folder. All right, and there's a text file, and I can open the text file with uh, nano. And there we go. This is the same text file as before. This text file is located on the hard drive installation of Arch Linux. So if I exit from here, there we go. You can see that we have full access to um, our Arch Linux installation and that we've successfully intruded into my system. And so from here, I can install the missing terminal that I couldn't install before with pacman-s 
console, which is the terminal I want to install for KDE. Yes on that. And there we go. Console is installed on my system and I can do whatever I need. Or alternatively, like I mentioned, you updated to a problematic package. Uh, let's say, for example, uh, Grub. Grub was having problems recently. So from here, I could downgrade Grub and I could choose previous versions to uh, fall back onto. So I'll just, uh, I'll just choose this one. All right, there we go. I've successfully downgraded Grub and yes, I'm gonna add it to the ignored packages list. And so after this, all you're gonna wanna do is run your typical Grub install and Grub-NK config commands to properly install this downgraded package of Grub. And so that should solve your Grub issue or alternatively, if you, you know, forgot to install a terminal, this is how you install your terminal. So once you're done with everything, all you got to do is type exit to exit the partitions you've truded into. And from here, you can use umount to unmount the two partitions that you just mounted. So I'm going to unmount VDA1 and VDA2. And that's all to it. And so now all we got to do is boot into our actual uh, installation and remove the live USB. So I'm going to power off my system here. All right, now that that's done, I'm gonna go into my BIOS and I'm gonna change the boot order to boot my actual uh, hard drive installation of Arch Linux first. And I'm gonna run my machine here. There we go, boot into Arch Linux. All right, here we are, I'm gonna put in my password. And as you can see, I actually have a terminal now. So perfect. Now I can run whatever commands now to run whatever. And if you look at my grub version, let's just say Pacman S grub. I'm going to put a sudo in front of it. And as you can see, grub is on my ignore package list. So that means it's been successfully downgraded. And so there we go. There's a new version of grub. I've successfully downgraded grub and I've installed a terminal using a live USB that trued it into my system. So that's all there is to it. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below and um, yeah, have a great day.